All right, uh, we've been telling about this hurricane season that kicks off on June 1, much to Tracy Burns' criticism. She's still here <laughs> for now. Uh, but, uh, but one stat for you to consider, not, not Tracy's longevity here, but, but the Gulf. Did you know, this is interesting, I did not know this, that most of the homes in the Gulf, and that's a real big hurricane prone area, right? Most of them are not covered for flood insurance. Today, I mean, right now, if all the hurricanes they've had, they're not covered. So are taxpayers going to pick up the bill? Jonathan, what do you think? Well, they do, Neil. I mean, it goes back to 1968 with the start of the National Flood Insurance Program, which essentially subsidizes coverage in high flood areas. A couple years after that, we got FEMA, which, of course, as we know, funnels billions of dollars to people in disaster areas. And I ask myself, why do they continue to live in these high-risk areas? I think they do to some extent because they know when a storm does come, the federal government's going to come riding in on a horse with billions of dollars of everyone's money. I, you know, a lot of it, I know flood insurance, I know this very well, uh, it's very, very costly, extremely expensive, and it's gotten dramatically more so. So, Jonas, I can understand a lot of people thinking twice about it, but should there be penalties for those who don't? Well, some people there are penalties for because they don't they won't get bailed out and then they've lost their home. And you're right, rate private market rates and even the, the rates that are subsidized in some cases have gone up to you know ten thousand a year from just a few thousand. So it's not like it's a total government gravy train. Uh, I'm with Jonathan a little bit on this. There's definitely some subsidizing of living in high risk areas and it's being subsidized by everyone in America. I will say that people need to live in some of these regions because, like we just said, all this oil infrastructure there. Well, if people couldn't afford workers, couldn't afford to live in this area. How are we going to get all that oil into the country? So the government subsidizing it, but they're also, if they didn't, they'd have to pay these people more, and then fuel would cost more. Well, I, you know, and I always feel uh, I'm not callous enough to say you live in a high risk area. There are tons of communities that have gotten hit by tornadoes in the last couple of weeks that were not in areas prone to get tornadoes. So I think that is an empty argument in the end. But Mark, to the point that if you are in a riskier area where hurricanes, for example, are more common, should it then be the law that you, you get flood insurance? In a lot of areas it is, but in, in a lot of these Gulf areas it is not. I think it should be the law that you should have to require, they should require insurance. The question is, is who's going to underwrite that insurance? Exactly. Because no property casual insurer in the right mind is going to write this or the, the insurance is going to be so expensive no one will be able to buy it. The real question I think, Neil, is why do we subsidize the development, because the development is subsidized, as well as the insurance of these high risk areas. And it's a, they're very attractive areas, they're very nice areas, but they're not the reason people don't have to live in these areas. These are areas that are El Primo areas, that are often beachfront property, that are, that are high, high risk, high rent. But you know, to be fair, those areas, people in those very high expensive, the I know, here. I know, I understand that. But actually, those yeah. in the, the, the beachfront and the high end areas, they are, they are paying their, their insurance so in, in much higher percentages. So th that's they, not quite the issue. It's are. when you just go a little inland. Um, I looked at this a little bit. It's fascinating. They're the ones who are not, and it's all in the same bag. And they, and the, but the income disparity drops precipitously when you move in just a little bit, so they can't afford it. And to Mark's point, these companies are not underwriting these loans, uh, insurance policies for these people anymore. You, you know, know what does, and the state does. Like in Florida, the state it will right. essentially be the backer upper if you will and, and then and you can get so a then that is us you know if you're a Floridian that's your that's that's you but it's not you're unlike, a national taxpayer that's you right but it's not unlike you know a 17 year old boy's car insurance is much higher than you know a 35 year old who's married because he's supposed to be the riskier person and it's required by law that he has insurance I, I actually think it should be viewed as the same and it's not and especially as you said in the areas where you move just in a little bit the income falls, and they're the ones that can't afford to pick themselves up when they get hit. Jonathan? Mm -hmm. Well, Neil, I, th I think ultimately it's not unlike the Federal Reserve bailing out Bear Stearns. It's the moral hazard argument of subsidizing risky behavior. And I think, you know, everyone's right. I mean, there's certain areas of the country which are more prone to have disasters, natural disasters of various sorts. And why the federal government, with all of our taxpayer dollars, is subsidizing these people's oceanfront pro ocean property? Again. You go. I, I don't understand. Uh, everything is. There's one step away from whacking Hillary Clinton. <laughs> all right, guys, I want to thank you all. Well, you, you, guys, you remember that nude maid who was accused of stealing $40,000 of jewelry? Well, you think we're over the energy hump as we drive out of May? Well, you forgot about hurricane season kicking off in June, June 1. Are our Fox Biz stars worried? Let's ask them. Jonathan Honig. 
Mark Teji, uh, we got Jonas Max Ferris here, and Tracy Burns. Jonathan, you worried? Well, Neil, I am. I mean, we, extra supply is so limited in the system that, yes, any disruption in that supply will result uh, in a major psych, uh, spike. I mean, I happen to be long natural gas with, with an ETF, which is UNG, for mm -hmm. just this reason. I mean, the system is so susceptible to any natural disaster, which is exactly why we need to focus on finding more supply and not this uh, cockamamie conservation that the Greens want us to do. <laughs> He always gets in the political. That's the only thing I love about Jonathan, you know. Um, Mark, what do you think of that? I think a lot of the uh, price is already factored into the price of oil already. Unless we have some sort of a big hit of a rig or some major, major refining uh, area in the Gulf, Gulf states, I think we're going to be okay. So I think a lot, of, a lot of this hyper, hyper price sensitivity we're seeing out there it's going to be, you know, I think we'll get a bump, but I, don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You know, Tracy, every show I do here, I learn something and it, when I'm paying attention. <laughs> and, and earlier on at the start of the show, uh, it's always when you speak, by the way, Tracy. <laughs> but uh, it, it, we had Huntsman here for Huntsman Chemical. Yes. And he was saying something that was simple, but it was clear. We have had a 1% increase in demand year over year in oil, right? And yet we've had this huge run up in prices. And he was all but pointing the finger at the, those, much to Jonathan's chagrin, who have speculated and gunned this beyond what's real. What do you make of that? Well, they're definitely out there. I mean, and you can't refute a guy like him because he's done a fabulous job of his company. I do think, though, that every year we have this conversation. Is oil going to spike because of the hurricanes? I think the hurricanes at this point... Well, we, we've decided to vote a segment to it. But every that, year, that attitude, every year... <laughs> that attitude dismisses it. No, no, no. Every year we worry mm -hmm. about it, and it turns out we worry about it for no reason. Well, I'm going to do this a year from now, and, and, and I don't want you to say the same thing. So you're saying... But... I'm agreeing with Mark to the extent that I think a lot of it is priced in because every year we come up here, May, you know, hurricane season really doesn't begin until the middle of July, right, when things really kick we in. We said June 1. But it really doesn't kick in until July. that's why, like, go away in May, start in June. <laughs> go ahead. And most of it, then, is priced in because we expect it. We expect these big hurricanes do, do you every not year. Remember when the, do, you, do you not remember when the Henry Hub was shut down after Katrina? I mean, prices for energy crossed the board But what soared. happened last year? What happened last year, Jonathan? We didn't have as many Nothing. hurricanes as the geniuses at the National Weather well, Service well, thought we were going to well, have. Well, the geniuses in the North, three years ago, they thought it would be a mild season. Of course, that was Katrina. But, Jonas, what do you think? I, that, uh, Katrina was an anomaly. I mean, these forecasts for the doomsday seasons that they always have are almost always wrong. Occasionally, you have real serious trouble. But ordinarily, you have whatever, they, six hurricanes, a few are bad. There's some minor spikes you'd get in fuel prices and some minor shutdowns. That's all ordinary business. It's, it's the out of the ordinary But do you think because the markets are more Jonathan. attention filled than, than before that they well, would respond? Well, there's more speculators in the market. I mean, like when Jonathan, when you're buying a, a product that is long natural gas, you're not, he's not in the business. Not, Jonathan's not going to turn the natural gas into whatever. He's, gonna, he's just speculating on it. So that does drive the price up. You know, personally, so Jonathan I'm is contributing to yeah. the well, energy. Well, I'm just saying when you have a lot of speculators, yeah. people yeah. are yeah. gambling on the weather that comes in, and all of a sudden it does lead to more spikes. <laughs> as far as the real hurricane activity, I don't think it's a big deal because, frankly, it mostly affects gasoline and natural gas. The oil market, the big fear in the oil market, and it's driven into 130, is that the global supply is not going right. to keep up with global demand. It just Any needs a brief disruption. Now, Mar very quickly before we go to a break here. It's just the fear of that. It's short life. Uh, all of you are right. It's always short life when we, it happens. But, but are you worried about that? Mark? We have an oil bubble here. We have an oil bubble, just like a housing bubble. I mean, sooner or later, the price of oil is going to have to drop. Now, could it go up some more? Sure. Could we yeah. have 5 $6 a gallon gasoline? Yeah. But it isn't going to go up forever. You know, Mark, I mean, does it ridiculous. scare you that I agree yeah. with you? Would you change your position knowing that I agree <laughs> with you? I want you to think about that during the break. You know, sometimes... <laughs> see? Okay. Give us some thought. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see, he's just shaking his head. Give a look at this. We'll have a lot more after this. Stick around. Coming in June, three great specials heating up your summer. Learn simple ways to dig out of debt, save money, and invest. This June, don't miss Dave Ramsey's special events. Every night, there's just one place to be. The best damn sports show, period. Come on in and be our guest for Sports Television's Nightly Party. Ladies and gentlemen. The world's greatest late night sports show is just getting started. The 
best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on FSN. Big what can I get for you, man? Better life than the one I got. 